A magnificent view of the French Broad River Valley and beyond is one of the things to admire at Biltmore House. George Vanderbilt situated his Grand Chateau both to showcase his property and to enhance the view of his house from a few well-chosen vantage points on the estate. At the house, guests were entertained in elegant surroundings on the ground floor. The family lived in similar style in suites on the next two floors. Guest quarters were just as luxurious. But up on the fourth floor, in George Vanderbilt's time, no guest would have walked down this intriguing hallway tucked under the eaves. However, guests today can glimpse behind the scenes to see how Biltmore House functioned. There were originally 21 maids' bedrooms on the fourth floor of Biltmore House. It would also have been used by other female servants in the house, such as the laundry staff or some of the kitchen staff, as well as traveling ladies' maids. When a guest brought their ladies' maids with them, they also would have stayed up here on the fourth floor. For both guests and staff, Biltmore House was ahead of its time, equipped with electricity, central heat, hot and cold running water, and fully functional bathrooms. Of course, each room also was supplied with the more familiar chamber pot for those times when one wished to avoid dashing down a cold hallway in the middle of the night. One of the other rooms that we opened was the linen closet, and that was a room that the housekeeper controlled. And she met with the mistress of the house, Mrs. Vanderbilt, every morning and to find out what guests were coming in. She would go up to the linen closet and pull out the number of bed linens and bath linens that were needed. And then she would take a uh, colored ribbon and tie them up. And that way, when a chambermaid who was assigned to that guest of rooms, it was color coded so she knew which linens to take. The other closet at the far end of the hallway was a uniform closet. It was the housekeeper's duty to gather all of the dirty uniforms and then send them out to be laundered. They were brought back and hung, and then the maids could come get their uniforms. This is the servants' hall. The room served a, a dual purpose. It was a room that the female servants who lived in nearby rooms could come on their off time. And they would have sat in the rocking chairs and socialized and gossiped about what, what was going on in the house. And it was also a room where they would come to mend their uniforms on their off time as well as other uh, household items in the house. This is a great room to, to illustrate the technology in the house. We have one of the synchronized clocks uh, that was part of a synchronized clock system. There was a master clock that's in the tower of the stable complex. The smaller clocks in the house were synchronized with that. So the servants had no excuse for being late. The house also featured a state-of-the-art internal telephone system for staff to communicate with each other and call buttons to summon staff as needed. There also was an elaborate fire alarm and control system. The architect of the house designed the house in six sections and they were divided by five firewalls. So he more or less designed Biltmore House to be fireproof. Uh, the house was built in mostly fireproof materials. Uh, it's a brick and steel construction um, with just a little bit of woodwork in the interiors. If a fire started in one section of the house, the butler would push that button down in the butler's pantry where a flag would go up, the bells would ring throughout the house, and the servants would know to race to that section of the house to fight the fire. There was one place on the fourth floor that George Vanderbilt did take guests, his observatory. Built in the center of the house at the top of the entrance tower, you could reach it via the grand staircase or take the elevator. From there, he could show off views of the estate to his guests and engage them in private conversations away from the bustle of downstairs life. 
they would have gone up the spiral staircase to the second story of the room, an interior balcony, and from that interior balcony they would have gone out uh, a set of French doors to an exterior balcony that wrapped around the main entrance tower and from that balcony there are spectacular views. But adjacent to the observatory is a special room built evidently for just one special purpose. The architectural model room was meant entirely to display the 1889 architectural model that Richard Morris Hunt built for his client, George Vanderbilt. And it's a model that he presented to George Vanderbilt to show his client what the, his house was going to look like. I think George Vanderbilt was very proud of his collaboration with Richard Morris Hunt and Frederick Law Olmsted in designing the house and the estate. And so I think when he brought his guests up here, it was a way for him to show his guests the model, but talk about his collaboration with Hunt and Olmsted. And then they could go out to the balconies outside the observatory and not only see the estate, but have up close um, contact with a lot of the exterior architectural elements.